Good morning, good morning, and welcome to our Monday, amen, May the 16th, Recharge Daily Devotion. This is Lady O here coming to you this morning on this beautiful Monday morning. I hope that your weekend went well. I hope that you had a beautiful weekend. I have an awesome word for you this morning, amen. You know we have been in the book of Acts, and so this week we're going to be uh, going over the fifth chapter of the book of Acts. You know, Acts is... Um, it is an awesome book to read, especially when you want to know how uh, the apostles went about, amen, after receiving uh, the power of the Holy Spirit, after receiving the Holy Ghost, because this was after the resurrection uh, of Jesus Christ and that after he had been taken away, amen, and so he, he sent them back something that would be able to keep them, that would be able to lead them, that would be able to guide them, and he, and, and, and one of the one of the attributes of what he sent back was, amen, the spirit of truth, uh, which we know as the Holy Spirit, amen, the spirit of truth. So today we're going to be talking about what happens when you lie to the Holy Ghost, amen. And you know, and if you have the Holy Ghost, it convicts you uh, of that sin when you find yourself, you know, maybe uh, falling into a place where you're between a rock and a hard place, and it's like, well, God, if I say the truth, it may offend, or, you know, or, or, or if I say the truth, I may end up getting myself, you know, uh, in a hard situation, uh, and then you end up telling, you know, some people call it a white lie, but I'm telling you, there is no, there is no little lie, there is no white lie, there is no uh, uh, big or small lie, it's just a lie. Amen. And, and so the Holy Spirit convicts you when you do these things, uh, you know, but we have also an advocate uh, when we do these things and the Holy Spirit convicts us right away, right away, immediately. We should repent. That's all you have to do. We should repent. So today we're going to look at a couple that decided to lie to the Holy Spirit. And, you know, the reason I, I'm so excited about this is because what I'm finding out, dear hearts, is that a lot of that is taking place in the church. There are a lot of people, amen, who align uh, to the Holy Spirit and the church. I, I, I mean, and that ought not to be so. Let me just clean my glasses here, amen, because I want to be able to see real good when I'm reading this. So we're going to just read real quickly for you. Acts, the uh, fifth chapter, and we're going to read, I believe it's to the 11th verse. You're going to read it real quickly here. It says, but a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and he kept back part of the proceeds. His wife also being aware of it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? So we see here they had sold some land, okay? While it remained, was it not your own? In other words, you know, while you had this land, it was yours. You know, you could do with what you want to do with it. And then he said, and after it was sold, was it not your own? <clears throat> and after it was sold, was it not still in your control, your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? Excuse me. <clears throat> Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down <coughs> and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young men arose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. Now, it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened to her husband, it says it right here. And Peter answered her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. So, you know, it was just, <laughs> I mean, Peter answered her, asking her to tell him. So you would think that 
maybe she would say, okay, I, he's already talked to my husband. So I guess my husband is who told him this because I didn't tell him this. And she would maybe consider maybe not to tell a lie as well. But it says here, she said, yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out as well. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead and carried her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church who upon all who heard these things. Amen. So the reason I, I, I'm wanting to really stress this this morning to you is because I believe, sweethearts, I believe that we are coming into a season and a, 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 an era where we are going to start seeing the manifestation and the power of the Holy Ghost operating in those lives that carry it. And that's why I said I'm very convinced that there are a lot of people who are in the church that do not possess the Holy Spirit. You say, well, Lady O, how can you even say that? You can't judge. Well, I can judge your fruit. I can judge your actions. I can judge if you if you're if you're lying and you know you're lying and you uh, in the old school you say you're just telling a bold faced lie. I'm not talking about something that you just kind of you know wasn't sure of and fell into or wasn't you know you just know that you know that this is a bold faced lie. We have a lot of that going on in the body of Christ, and it ought not to be so. And we're coming in a day and age. You know, my husband, I'm not at liberty to talk about the dream that he did have. But in the dream that he had, he had a dream last night. And in the dream, some of these same uh, uh, things that, that we're reading about here began to take place. Why did I believe the Lord allow him to have that dream? It's because I believe that we are going to start seeing my soko Shabbat the judgment of God come upon the, uh, the and starting at the house of God. Because people are not allowing the Holy Spirit to to fill them, to 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 you know when when you when you know they say they're saved but you're not you're not you have you know there's a scripture that say have you believed since you received? They're not going further to allow the Holy Spirit to clean out everything that's not like God. And here, it says here in Acts, the fifth chapter, it says, But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? We have people that will lie to the uh, people that are in the church that will lie to the men and women of God simply because you're trying to uh, appear to be more than what you are. Because that's what happened here. Peter asked him, he says, while, while it remained, while the land was, was, was yours, you could have said what you wanted to say, did what you wanted to do. If you didn't want to give, but, but $2, you could have did that, but did it in truth. And that would have been accepted. No one told you to, to say that you were going to give as much as you was going to give. But here we read that their motives were impure. Because one of the reasons why Ananias and Sapphira decided to lie about their proceeds was because their motives was not pure. They were perpetrating. Yes, and another uh, word or synonym for perpetrating is wrongdoers. They were a fraud. They were doing something uh, out of the wrong motive because they wanted to be like Barnabas who we read actually in chapter 4, around the 36th verse. If you read about Barnabas, he was also known when you read that and you study him out, he was also known as the son of encouragement. Let me just give you a little history about Barnabas. According to uh, uh, Acts, the fourth chapter in the 36th verse, Barnabas was a Cypriot Cyper Jew, a Cypriot Jew, okay? Uh, meaning he was from Cyprus. 
uh, he was named uh, an apostle in Acts, the fourth chapter, the 14th chapter and the 14th verse. I want you to go back and read and study that out on your own because I don't have time on this little daily devotion to, to do that with you. But it says he and uh, Paul, the apostle, they undertook missionary journeys together and defended Gentile converts against the Judaizers. They traveled together, making more converts. So here we have a man of God who traveled with Paul. He saw many signs and wonders and miracles take place. And they also participated in the Council of Jerusalem. It says here that the history of the Jews in Cyprus, it dated back to uh, the second century BC. The Jews lived well in Cyprus during the Roman rule, okay? Christianity was preached to the Jews in Cyprus at an early date with St. Paul being the first and the apostle Barnabas, a native of Cyprus, the second. So, uh, he, he, he was there, amen, with Paul and, 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 you know, and we know all of us know who Paul was. He was a great apostle of God. They attempted to convert the Jews to Christianity. And it says here that Ar Aristobulus of Brittany, uh, 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 Britain, he was the first bishop of Britain. And he was also the brother of Barnabas. So Barnabas came from a wealthy family. He came, I mean, he, he was raised up in a time where, you know, Christians were, you know, uh, they were being treated okay and, and, and they fared well. And so here we have a couple in the church uh, doing things to be seen, not from the heart. They trying to, you know, when Barnabas, he sold, it, said, it, it says that he sold his, his possessions and gave it to the church. So here we have a couple who maybe could not really measure up with Barnabas, but yet they wanted to be seen by others as somebody like Barnabas, doing things to be seen by others. I, I, I want to, uh, I want to challenge you not to do that. Be authentic in who you are. Be authentic to who God has called you to be and who God has made you to be. Don't try to keep up with the Joneses because you get yourself in trouble when you do that. I'm talking about lying to the Holy Spirit, trying to make people believe that they were more than who they really were, Ananias and Sapphira. That's what we're talking about here. But, but a lot of Christians are like this in the church. Uh huh. We have a lot of things that are going on in the body of Christ that should not be. God already knows who you are. Why are you perpetrating? Why are you lying? Why are you trying to make like that you have more than what you have? Get, be like the widow woman. If it's if it's nothing but a widow's might that you have, give that, but give it from your heart. Don't try to be like someone else. That's why Peter asked them, why have you conceived this thing in your heart? See, apparently, I believe Ananias and Sapphira was like many of, uh, of, of people in, in the church today. They had not received the spirit of truth. I'm just about finished here. They had not received the spirit of truth because one of the functions of the spirit of truth is to convict you when you lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> John 16 and 8 says, and when he has come, who is he? The spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost. When he has come, he will convict the world of sin. One of the functions of the Holy Spirit is to convict you when you are not being truthful. And then verse 13 in that, in that same chapter, John, the 16th uh, ch uh, uh, chapter, says, However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. And he will not speak of his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. Whatever he hears the Father speak, he will speak. And he will tell you of things to come. That's why I said Ananias and Sapphira could not have had the Holy Spirit. Because had they had the Holy Spirit, it would have convicted them. And they would not, lie, they would not have lied to the man of God. Check yourself. Have you believed since you received? 
Because if you're out here doing everything you think you're big enough and bad enough to do and you don't have to answer to nobody, uh, <laughs> we're coming in a time where, honey, if you're, not, if you're not really trying to live righteous and holy, you better, you better get out of the church. Because it's coming a time where judgment is going to start at the house of God. Because mm -hmm. you don't have to do that. You know, you, you, you can go to God and say, Lord, I, I'm a sinner. I need help with this, this issue, God. I don't, I don't want to be a liar. The Bible says a liar won't even tarry in his eyesight. What's your excuse? Ananias and Sapphira, they didn't have to lie. They didn't have to give in it. They didn't have to sell their possession. They didn't have to Peter say, you didn't have to do that. But since you did do it and come in here perpetrating, you gonna answer. For that lie. And they answered with their life. Don't have to pay the price. That is the ultimate price. For a lie that you didn't have to tell. This is Lady O. Mwah, saying smooches. I love you. I know the word and the devotion was a little rough this morning. A little tough. But you know what? If you are in that position... I encourage you to repent. That's all you have to do. Simply repent. Say, God, I need help. I need help, Lord, with this lying tongue of mine. Help me to be truthful. Help me to receive the spirit of truth. And if you pray that prayer, I guarantee you, he will help you, dear heart. I love you today. Go in peace. Go with God and go in peace. Amen. Smooches.